My name is Patrick Rapuano, and I'm a first year resident at Wills Eye Hospital. The pre residency course is approximately three weeks at the beginning of the year. Uh, we are lectured about kind of every different area of ophthalmology from the basics of the slit lamp exam uh, all the way to intraocular tumors and kind of much more rare diseases. Uh, it's an excellent overview of the essentials needed to just get started. It's a combination of kind of hands-on at the slit lamp, trying to learn the indirect exam, some time in the wet lab, and a lot of time uh, like getting lectures about kind of all sorts of topics. Uh, it makes the transition to residency, especially people who have recently moved to Philadelphia, uh, I think it gives them a little bit of time to get their lives together, get a little bit settled here before the clinical rotations really start. As, as much as one can be prepared for my first day in the emergency room, uh, I think the pre-residency course helped. My, my first patient in the emergency room this year, uh, they started us off with some of the easier patients. In the ER we have everything from you know, CMV retinitis to 101 year olds with cataracts that have been developing for 50 years to uh, patients who come in with the dry eyes, kind of a recurrence of their chronic disease. It's really a great place to learn and practice exam skills and be able to treat patients uh, and, and kind of help them get feeling better because uh, a lot of what comes into the ER are kind of treatable, fixable processes uh, that we can, we can address pretty quickly there. I've had a lot of difficult cases in the ER. One that immediately comes to mind was a 12-year-old boy uh, who came in yesterday was diagnosed less than a year ago with keratoconus and came in with uh, a perforated cornea just from progression of disease and thinning. Uh, really stoic young guy uh, and just kind of having the ability to diagnose him, get him started with treatment and then know he's going to be able to follow up with some of my co-residents the next day in clinic. Uh, is, is nice to know and typically uh, the residents will kind of update us on the course of our patients who follow up in the clinics, let us know how they're doing, if you know the subspecialty attendings had any specific advice for how the patient could have been managed initially or how they're going to be managed moving forward. So even though we're not necessarily the ones to follow up in the clinic with our patients from the emergency room, we do kind of get to hear about their course and their progression. The structure in the emergency room at this point in the year is there are two first year residents and then we have a second year resident, kind of two at different points during the week and we call these senior residents in the ER our ER moms or ER dads. So I have two ER moms, Dil Rue and Marissa, two of our second year residents. They've both been great. Uh, we kind of split up the patients throughout the day. Uh, early in the year, the second years triage all the patients. So they see them initially, hear a little bit about the story, decide if they're appropriate for dilation, and kind of give us a little bit of a sense uh, and direction as far as where to uh, focus our exam. And then, you know, some of the more simple patients we'll see and then just staff with the attending directly. Certainly some of the more complex patients we'll ask our, uh, our ER moms or ER dads, you know, these senior residents to come in, help us with the exam, re-perform some sections of the exam and kind of help us work through a differential. And that relationship actually goes both ways. While certainly we ask for advice from the senior residents on our patients, when they have interesting patients, interesting cases, exam findings, they'll bring the less senior residents in uh, like as part of teaching. So if there's an interesting exam finding, they'll direct you to towards it. They'll either have you, you know, on the teaching scope, or we also have slit lamp photos uh, we can take down there, or they'll, you know, direct you to part of the fundoscopic exam, and they'll explain to you what you're seeing while you're seeing it, uh, which is also a really great part of the ER. So, as far as really interesting exam findings, if something happens that entire day, all all the residents in the ER that day typically will get a chance to examine the patient. I'm on the, we call it the PATH ER rotation, which is four mornings a week. I'm in pathology uh, up with Dr. Eagle and Dr. Millman, and that's a really great experience. We spend a lot of time at this huge teaching microscope that has, I think, seats for 
12 in addition to kind of the main pathologist. Uh, we do teaching sessions, we sign out all the cases, uh, and we also do grossing of eyeballs, grossing of like the pathology specimens that come from uh, either the wills, ORs, or uh, kind of sent in from around the country. I spend Tuesday mornings in Dr. Shields' clinic, uh, the ocular oncology clinic, where they have this remarkable kind of imaging suite. So every patient you see, you're able to see the imaging from their date of fir date first seen uh, in the Shields Clinic, in our ocular on oncology clinic. And then you're able to go through the imaging, ultrasounds, OCTs, and external images, fundus images, and watch the patient's progression. Uh, and then we have a chance to examine and kind of interact with many of the patients as well. So that's a really fun Tuesday morning clinic during this block, and then every afternoon, and then on call evenings and weekends, I'm in the emergency room. Why Will's Eye? So I grew up in the Philadelphia area. My dad's an attending here, so you know, I grew up around the Will's building. Uh, used to spend Saturday mornings in the building that now has the Will's ER, Jefferson Neuro Hospital building. Uh, in the little playground down the hall. Uh, worked here in high school, been exposed to all the people here, but I did not expect to want to do ophthalmology, nor did I expect to want to come back to Will's Eye. Uh, when I went to medical school and uh, kind of started leaning towards ophthalmology in the first place, uh, but certainly the pull of home, the pull of family was big for me but rotating you know, through different departments, uh, different ophthalmology departments around the country and a really wonderful ophthalmology department where I went to med school, when I had the chance to come back, rotate at Wills, rotate in the emergency room, I mean, that just felt like one of the most exciting experiences anyone could have in ophthalmology. Uh, just the variety, the really interesting pathology and just the an endless flow of patients I think was really attractive in a place like Will's, but I think that you know not just uh, not just me, but a lot of the residents here also feel that the like friendly and collegial nature at Will's and the real notion of Will's family. While I do have Will's family, uh, I think even my co-residents who don't, uh, you know, have Will's blood family, kind of feel the Will's family as soon as they show up. Uh, it's an incredibly supportive place. And I also think that this, that, that Will's is many different things. Uh, it's a huge network, but I think really at the core of Will's is the residency and the emergency room. And I think a lot of the people around Will's, kind of the higher ups, the attendings, the service chiefs, really uh, appreciate and value the residents and really appreciate and value the emergency room and the service that provides to the community. So I think the, just how, how important the residency is, how important the residents are, and the, the ER experience, I think were kind of huge, huge factors in bringing me to Wells.